this monstrosity here is my file server. Been down here running for a few years, and it's time to do some maintenance on it. Um, the bottom center hard drive, which is this one right down here, that bay is not being detected by the RAID card. And I know it's a bad connection somewhere because I've changed the the drive, the RAID card, and the drive caddy, and it still doesn't see the drive. So uh, I got to take it out and clean everything up anyway pull this fan assembly out and uh, hopefully reseating the ribbon cable is going to fix the issue because these are special cables that I haven't been able to find anywhere. They're like either 24 or 30 inch single device ATA 100 cables and they're not too easy to come by. Uh, they're actually uh, were made for this case as far as I know. In fact, all the hardware that's in this system was all originally installed in this case, except for the hard drives themselves. Alright, I finally got some help to get this monster out of the rack and get it put up on the workbench here. It's extremely heavy. And um, I also don't have the washer and dryer uh, making a bunch of noise while I'm trying to talk, so it makes it a little easier. Anyway. Uh, people have asked me what this system is, or what it used to be rather. When this was new, it was made, I believe that what it was called was an Avid Unity Landshare EX. Uh, it's basically a big video, digital video server when it was new. And it was like absurdly expensive, you know, seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 I want to say. Uh, I don't remember right offhand because I don't remember what I did with the spec sheet. It's basically a dual 2.4 gigahertz Xeon system. I think each of those chips is also a dual core. So it's a quad core system all together. Uh, two gigs of, of uh, ECC PC2100 memory. Uh, I cannot talk tonight for some reason. But anyway, there's a, a triple, or a, rather a 2 plus 1 redundant power supply in there and uh, a pair of three-wear 7506-8 RAID controllers, 16 hard drives, and after I'm done with the upgrades I'm going to have the existing, uh, there's eight 320 gig drives on one controller, those will be staying in there, and then the second controller is going to have eight 250 gig drives on it that I've already got laying around so there's no cost to me on that. Right now there's like 560 gig hard drives and, and uh, three 250 gig. So there's four different arrays on this machine and when I'm all done with the upgrade it's only going to have two different RAID 5 arrays and a total capacity of about 4.3 terabytes. I really wanted to just scrap this system out and go with something newer that had SAS or, or SATA interface but to have something with this equivalent size with hot swap capability and everything would have been absurdly expensive because the cost of hard drives is astronomical right now in January of 2012. Um, I think a one terabyte hard drive I used to be able to get for 55 or 60 dollars is now well over 200 dollars. So it would cost me, if I went with SAS or, or SATA, it would probably cost me about a thousand bucks just for 4.3 terabytes worth of hard drives maybe even a little more than that plus the cost of raid, uh, modern RAID controllers would be astronomical uh, I don't want to think of what replacing a server like this would cost with modern technology probably a good few thousand dollars so everybody's ripping on me for using IDE but the truth is I got all the performance I need and it doesn't cost me crap because I've already got the drives laying around so that's why I use this old piece of junk but uh, let me see if I can get, get all this stuff out of the way and figure out where the bad connection is on that drive down there. I'm hoping I'll just have to reseat the cable or replace the back plane or some broken solder joints. Who knows, but i got to stop blabbing and start working. Alright, i got the fan assembly out of the way and I can kind of get to the ribbon cables now. Um, it's really dusty in here. I'd like to get my air compressor out and... Uh, blow all the dust out of this but I'm going to have to take it outside probably tomorrow and uh, do it out there because it's going to make a huge dust cloud in here if I 
if I uh, do it indoors. And I got the fan assembly sitting down here. So I guess I'm going to try to dig in here and see if that bottom ribbon cable is loose at all. I'm guessing it's not going to be though. Knowing my luck, it's going to be the darn back plane that connects to the drive caddy. Well, it looks like the cable wasn't loose, so either that means there is a back plane issue or a cable issue. Uh, both of them are not anything I wanted to find out because they're both going to be hard to replace, especially the back plane. But I'm guessing if there is something wrong with that, it's just going to be broken solder. The system never got moved or anything. Just one day the drive started randomly dropping out of the array, and sometimes I'd reset it and it'd come back. But the last time it dropped out, uh, everything I tried, nothing worked. Even changing the RAID card, nothing. Uh, put another drive in the same bay, it still wouldn't see it. So... I'm going to try to get this hooked up and see if maybe reseating the cables and moving stuff around has made it to start detect again. And uh, if it has, then I'm all but certain it's going to be the ribbon cable because that's all I've moved. Well, it looks as if moving the ribbon cables around did the trick because the drive is appearing in the setup menu now, saying it's not in use. And that drive was not appearing there before. So that confirms my suspicion that it's either the solder joints on the back plane or the ribbon cable itself that's got a, a flaky connection. Um, but I think the next step is to get the dust cleaned out of this and, um, and then, then I can start changing out my drives and getting it set up the way I want. And while I got it apart, I'm going to uh, try to find out where the actual problem is. It's just going to be a nightmare to take that whole back, that drive cage all apart. This thing's still pretty doggone noisy, even with all those fans taken out. <laughs> it kind of surprised me, actually. <clears throat> so, some progress, anyway. At least I got all eight drives on this controller back. While I'm at it, I'm going to upgrade the software that's installed on here. Uh, so I just went to the installation utility on this. CD I just made with the latest version of uh, NAS Lite 2 and the OS is actually installed on a 32 meg flash card which is right down there. It's really hard to see but um, uh, once this boots up I'll just update the software and get that out of the way and then I'm going to take care of the hard drive issue. For some reason my camera doesn't want to focus today. NAS Lite is very simple to work with. All you got to do is go to number 3, update installation on disk 0, and that will upgrade the software. So, it's transferring off the CD right now. Is now ready for use. So let's reboot and take the uh, CD out of the drive. There you go. Okay. Rebooting. Don't you just love autofocus when you're trying to record a computer monitor? Uh, the shadow from this wire is bugging me too. This uh, motherboard takes quite a while to post. Probably has a lot of diagnostics, diagnostics to go through. I 
I think it's actually an Intel SE7501BR2 motherboard. Okay, yeah, there's the degraded array there. I don't want to run this system too long because without the, uh, the fan assembly and the top cover, those hard drives will overheat, especially the Seagates because they run hot. Uh, so I got to hurry up and see if my software update is done. And I'm going to shut the system down and finish up what I got to do tomorrow when I have more time. Yeah, it's going to be nice to merge these into just two arrays instead of four. This might take a bit. Uh, it's been a while since I watch the actual boot up process on the file server. Knowing my luck it's going to decide to do a disk check which is going to take forever and I'm going to have to leave it running. Of course I can't even really do that. I have no cooling fans. So hopefully it's not going to do a disk check. Otherwise I'm just going to turn the damn thing off. <laughs> I'm going to be formatting everything anyway, so I don't care if it nukes the data. 